Hey guys, my name is Wilson. Today we're going to be doing a secret uh, brand new segment which is called answering your comments and what that is is basically I'll be answering your questions in these videos so then that way you're getting a personal consultation from me. Hey, it's Wilson here, owner of multiple seven figure business. If you guys want more tricks, tips and hacks and strategies on how to build a successful thriving restaurant, make sure you guys subscribe along the journey and make sure you smash the like button. If you're thinking about how to build a successful restaurant or you already have a restaurant but you're pulling your hair out because no one's coming in make sure you guys leave in the comment section below all your burning desires and all your burning questions because i'm going to be doing this segment to answer all your questions okay so that way you can achieve the freedom that you want you can quit your nine to five you can quit working 12 hour days pulling your hair out so that we can travel with your family you can take care of the people you love and spend much more quality time with them without further ado let's dive right in question number one reddit boss the location i have in mind is the same street as many large businesses at lunch there are a lot of people walking around to get food however at the evening it's not that many people is it still a good idea considering the high lunch demand hey reddit boss thank you for the question I actually think that it is still a good, good investment if the numbers make sense. I'll tell you a little bit of story. My friend owns a poke shop in downtown Vancouver and they're doing exceptionally well during the lunchtime. They're making upwards of more than $4,000 in revenue just doing the lunch rush from 10 to 2 p.m. Tell me, is that profitable? It is very profitable and that's the reason why they only open during those times because at night there's not much people. Understanding your demographic, understanding what you want out of this business is very, very important. If you wanna fully utilize the day, fully utilize the rent, then this may not be the best location for you. But if you're only looking to be able to hit those people, those office people, those people that are only working during those lunch hours, then it is a good location for you. So at the end of the day, once, it, once again, it comes back down to your appetite and what you're looking for in your business. If you do not know exactly what I'm talking about, check out this video where I talk about the four different restaurant types, the different variables that you should consider when opening up your restaurant. Question number two, Tuella. Hey Wilson, I wanna open an ice cream business, but think about the winter, it'll slow down. How do you improve it during the winter time? Well, right on. You've asked the right question to the right person because we own seven different locations and we own an ice cream business. And throughout the years, I've definitely learned how do you actually bring in more sales during those times. Well, first of all, you can actually introduce different flavors that are more suitable for those colder climates. For us, we introduced the pumpkin spice flavor. We also introduced new cup designs that are much more uh, suitable for the Christmas time. We introduced cups that are Santa shade. We introduced new flavors that looks like a Christmas tree and in turn allows people to actually feel that we're still relevant during the winter time because people still eat ice cream during the winter time. Now that is only some of the tactics I'm sharing with you. Another tactic is to introduce food items. Running an ice cream shop is very, very difficult because the average order value is quite small. It varies from five to seven dollars because what more can people order other than ice cream? If you're able to introduce bakery, if you're able to introduce waffle, if you're able to introduce quick grab and go food items that are easy to make, but warm, but hot, dessert items these are all great addition to your ice cream that gives people a reason to come in during the winter times the cold times they want to just come in and chill and have a spot to drink something or eat something another tactic is to introduce hot drinks hot drinks is a killer item and it also is very very profitable high margins so if you can actually create this combo theme that not only allows you to be able to have much more average ticket value but also allows you to be able to combat the slower seasons during the winter time. Question number three, so will Lanji. I have a restaurant, but customers come in once, but the next day they don't come in. What am I doing wrong? Hey, unfortunately, if your food sucks, people are not gonna come back again because they feel cheated. So that's probably the reason why they don't come back. That's the truth and it hurts. But in reality, if for example, you want more tactic to have more repeat customers, retaining your customers, then perhaps you can have some referral program or like snap cards. And at the end of the day, make sure that the quality of your food is good. If your quality of the food is good, people will always come back. And if people don't come back, that means that it's either a hyped item that it's, hey, you know what? It's very good for Instagrammable picture. They'll come once, take the picture, and there's no reason for them to come back again 
And again, we learned that the hard way through our ice cream, which is the reason why we upgraded, we changed up our recipe, we also introduced a lot more different food offering for people to come back again and again. The second reason is that your food is just not that great. People tried it, they don't enjoy the food or the customer service is just not there. So before you figure out, before you actually go into doing more marketing and whatsoever, understand where is that problem? Is it in the food quality or is it in the product offering? And then you work on the tactics on bringing in more people more frequency. Question number four, Raphael saying, can you talk about bubble tea business and how to start one from scratch and remain small and huge profit? I wanna avoid franchising. Basically, you're telling me to tell you my trade secrets and to save you 40 grand from our franchise fees and that's what you wanna know. The secret to success, the secret to give you tons of money. Unfortunately, Raphael, that's not gonna happen because the trade secrets people actually pay for and that's why people go with franchises. But I'm gonna tell you the fundamentals on how do you build a thriving bubble tea business, okay? Just the fundamentals, just to give you a sneak peek about our franchising system. At the end of the day, you need to be able to understand your customer demographic. You need to understand who is it that will buy bubble tea, okay? Majority of the time, we're talking about Asian demographic because Caucasians, they don't really understand or nor is it part of their staple item. That's just the way it is, which is the reason why you need to understand the location you're at. If your location and the demographic actually supports and has demand for this product, then you have a good chance of success by offering this, them this product. Second of all is to understand how advanced and how sophisticated this demographic is. There is a lot of different tiers of bubble teas out there. We're talking about if you're in a centralized location that has a really, really dense Asian demographic somewhere like Vancouver, that means that a lot of people are already understanding the bubble tea game. They have much higher expectation for the quality of the bubble tea. You need to use the real tea leaves. You need to use real quality item because that's how particular they are with their bubble tea. Versus if you're in some some, some smaller location, smaller city that has a good size demographic of Asian, but they're not that sophisticated as a bubble tea drinker, then you can actually use, you know, traditional way of making your bubble tea through powder, through just regular syrup, and that itself should be sufficient. Nonetheless, understanding your demographic is the key to building a successful business. Hey guys, if you are getting any value whatsoever from this video, make sure you smash the like button. And if you want your questions answered, make sure you leave it in the comment section below because I will be choosing your question and I will be answering them in the series to follow. Question number five. Hey, Mr. Wilson Lee, can I ask you more personal question? My partner and I are planning to put up a restaurant and we find it very difficult to find the right concept best suited for us. That's a very good question, which is the reason why I created a video to talk about this, the four different restaurant types that you should consider. Check out that video and then you'd be able to be much, much more informed. At the end of the day, when you're creating a restaurant, restaurant is only a vehicle, a vehicle to be able to satisfy your customers, a vehicle to for you to solve a solution, okay? So it's not about the vehicle, it's about the people. It's about the people that are having these problems. Understand the demographic that you wanna serve, understand what their problem is. I'll give you an example. If you're talking and you wanna be able to help people who are working in downtown, who are very, very health cautious, then perhaps a vehicle, a solution is to provide them with a quick grab and go healthy meal. Position that in that area and if there's not much supply and there's a lot of demand, a lot of people that are wanting a solution, they want something healthy, yet they only have an hour for lunch, they don't wanna line up, this could be a very profitable, demanding business idea out there for you. So at the end of the day, this is just an example. Understand exactly who is it that you wanna serve and provide that solution to them. That's the trick to your success. Question number six, Maggie and Truffles. Hey Wilson, you're very inspiring, thank you. Thanks for the market advice, I have many questions for you, but my top one is how do you deal with third-party delivery apps like Uber Eats, Skip the Dishes, Grubhub, and them? Do you use them for your service? Yes, we use them because it is gonna be the norm in the future. It is basically, we're in the very, very early stages, the early adapter phases of this phenomenon, okay? In the future, in the next five, 10 years, this is gonna become the norm. That's how people are gonna be 
consuming their goods, consuming their meal. Delivery as a core is the fundamental of businesses. In today's world, okay, in today's time, it is even more prominent, okay? So how do you deal with them? A lot of them actually charge around 20 to 35% as, um, as a cut from the top line, okay? So they take a really, really big chunk out of your revenue. But at the end of the day, you need to view them as a marketing tool. Don't view them as a profit generating item because you, you as a restaurant owner, you only have five to 10% margins as profit. And if you're taking off 30 off top, then basically you're not gonna be able to make money off every item you sell. So you need to be able to consider them as a marketing tool for you. They're basically reaching much more people than you wouldn't be able to reach. That's the reason why you, when you view them as a marketing tool, then you can actually put coupons into your, your, your offering, coupons and stuff and items and incentives to incentivize the people that are ordering delivery to actually come by to your restaurant. So then that way you can sell them things of actually hiring margins. In this video, I cover how do you actually win from servicing third party delivery app services, okay? So we're talking about creating good items and profitable items that you can actually service them. Definitely check out this video right here. Hey guys, I had so much fun answering these questions for you. I know it's a little bit short and I know I talk really fast. It is because I wanna go through as many questions as possible for you. So if you have any burning desires, if you have any questions, make sure you leave in the comment section below and I will answer them. So make sure that you guys do that. If you guys find any value in these segments and in this video at all, make sure you smash the like button so then that way I know to create more of these videos for you. Otherwise, make sure that you guys subscribe along the journey. I'll see you guys in the next video.